Welcome back, everybody, to 360 Sports. Today we're going to be talking some basketball. I'm joined by Kenny Wells, Aiden or Ch Chooch. It's Chooch. <laughs> you, you can see the name tag. It says yeah, Aiden, it's but Chooch, that's Chooch. 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 Guys, I'm not going to lie. When I look over and see, see you two on this side of the table, it, it brings me back a little bit. Sorry, Chooch. Not to, you know, not to... Whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll get in. We'll just get right into it here. <laughs> Kenny, I, I mean, you're going to love to talk about this. Anthony Davis, monster game last night. 27 points, 25 boards. Is that true? Or is that – did he actually have 25 boards? <laughs> oh, 27 no. points, 25 rebounds. Five oh, assists, man. seven steals, three blocks. Yeah, what in the world is that stat line? What are we thinking? I mean, what in the world is that stat line? I was praying for AD to get two more blocks, and he would have had a five-by-five, five, just like Wemby. That is um, this is This is AD at his dominance. But uh, I will be fair, Nas Reed isn't a paint protecting kind of guy. No, and um, the Timberwolves are short on Gobert, no Carl Anthony yeah. Towns as well. But this just shows how much of a force that AD can be. I watched the games and he's the only one crashing, but he's, he's not always going to bring those boards in. But he was able to bring in a lot of offensive rebounds. I believe he had as much as the Timberwolves or more than them. And um, when he's playing at that level, the Lakers are unstoppable. So I'm going to need to see more, more from him night in, night out. Because this is the AD we all love and we all love yeah. to see. Well, yeah, I mean, the Lakers' success depends on AD because LeBron, you're always getting LeBron. LeBron's always going to show up. Even if he's not getting 30 points, he's going to give you everything else because that's how smart he is. That's, like, at what point he is at in his career. So, I don't know, just AD, if he's playing like this throughout the playoffs, they can beat pretty much everyone probably besides the Nuggets. I mean, you if know, he's going for 27 and 25, I'd, like, yeah. that's just ridiculous. I think the thing is, though, like, AD and LeBron – AD, this year, he's been on and off. He's had games like this, though, similar to this. The problem has, hasn't has been Anthony Davis. Like, LeBron's obviously been having a crazy season. I looked at the numbers the other day. It's better than most people think. But, like, the thing is that now D'Lo and Jackson Hayes and guys like Rui, are, like, those guys are now stepping up. Yeah. Like, they're playing yeah. well. That's why they're starting to win. So, like, is it sustainable? I don't know. I, I'm not going to believe in them because it never seems to be sustainable with them. They have one of these runs every year. Yeah, I mean, they do. Literally every year. But I you, mean, didn't, you didn't like that. Yeah, but it's though. like I've been saying for months, the only only thing holding them back is you need D'Lo or your third option to be a 17-point yeah. per game D -Lo, score. Yeah, D'Lo looks he, like he's back to yeah, the he's risen to that lie. occasion. Yeah. He just dropped 44 or whatever it was yeah. on the Bucks. If you're getting that D'Lo, I think this team is unstoppable. I, I, I agree. If they have that D'Lo consistently. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Yeah. So I'm nobody in the West can no, They're tough. I like they're the, tough. the Nuggets, I'm, I'm scared of them. I'll be honest. I do not you want, I don't no, want yeah, them to, to land the Nuggets, nowhere yeah. near in the first round. That's why I'm so iffy on this playing talk, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's – what are you going to say? Nothing. Well, I, I, I agree with I, what he's saying okay. almost entirely. I don't think they're unbeatable. Unstoppable is a lot. Yeah. No, like, yeah. That's, that's when, you have, when you have LeBron who's heavy playing term. serious. <laughs> yeah. You're and like and, a, a, and a, play, a, a playoff mode Whoa. LeBron. Well, don't do that with the magic. It, don't even say well, that. I said, wait, wait, what did we say? What about well, the I magic? Didn't say, I, said, I said you're acting like they're the magic. Just had to. Don't do oh, that. Oh, the magic is No. At their full form, yeah. Magic might be the most unstoppable. I will tell you this. They do have a baby LeBron on their hands. Oh. Who's that? Okay. Who isn't it? It's, it's obviously Paolo Bancaro. Listen, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? Pa Paolo does everything that LeBron does, if we're being honest. Okay, so yeah, if we're being From the vision. So no, no, the vision, the size-wise. You might want to say so is Luca, but Luca's not LeBron's size. Right. But Paolo compares to LeBron. Yeah, yeah. Can he we, doesn't ever know if he wins Can we LeBron. talk about, I don't know if this is coming up later in the show. I don't think it is. Can we talk about... Genie Bus and LeBron on the sideline. <laughs> that so that was, and, uh, who is I don't it? know who the other woman was. Rambus. Yeah. But, no, was yeah. Yeah. Rambus is <laughs> That was Whatever like, was. I, at first I saw the tweet, it was like, oh, first off, happy International Women's Day. But like, he actually said <laughs> he that. Said he it, actually yeah. said that to them. It's insane. But that was awesome. Marais, I mean, man. LeBron's the goat in more than one ways. <laughs> I mean, we were talking about the playing tournament a little bit before. Four teams Warriors, Lakers, Kings, Mavs. Who do you guys see getting those two final playoff spots after the play-in is all said and done? I almost want to say, like, I love LeBron too, but I kind of want to see the I want to see the young teams. You know, I want to see the Mavs, and I want to see the Kings make it out. I don't think they will just because when it gets to that playoff atmosphere, I mean, you have LeBron, then you have Curry. They're probably going to be the – if the playoff started today and the play-in started today, I would probably pick the Warriors and the Lakers to both advance, which would be crazy if the Kings and yeah. Mavs missed the playoffs. But, yeah, right, I, you know, I'm going to say – Kings and Lakers. That's going to be my official prediction. Okay. I like it. I want to see the young guys like Luka and Fox in the playoffs now because they're starting to come up. We've seen what the other guys can do. They've already won everything. But, like, the Mavs and the Kings watching them this year, like, those are two of the worst defensive teams I've ever watched. Yeah, like, not like this year. Like, they both are terrible. <laughs> and Curry and LeBron, I mean, they get in, they could beat anybody. I think, like, 
Selfishly, I want to see Luka in the playoffs, in the Kings. I think the Kings are really fun. But it's best for the sport if LeBron and Curry. Really? Yeah. So, so you'd rather see the – are you saying the Kings I, are more I, fun to I'm see a, than I'm the Lakers I'm a LeBron Lakers guy, Warriors? but, I mean – Going the forward, like, we got to start passing towards What is so here, fun like, about the Kings? DeMontis Sabonis just holds the ball at the elbow just says, here. The Kings, yeah. war, the the Kings Warriors, Warriors series last box. year in the playoffs was my month. favorite they series all playoffs. They have a lot of guys that give you buckets. I don't want to see Spencer Dinwiddie like in the playoffs. Dude, they have three yeah. players. I think Spencer Dinwiddie is the greatest defender of all time. I don't want to see zero. Zero defender. Did you see a block, Dave? Yeah, so That was tough. That was tough. Come on. Dead serious. That's actually a good point. I feel like the Kings have this, like, label they're a fun team. They're really not that fun. I think they're like, they fun. Lyles? Dude, Fox is one of the most fun players in the league. Yeah, he's fun. Outside, fun of, yeah. outside of Malik Monk. Sabonis so is like, <laughs> you'll, and you'll, get, Fox? you'll get like a Demi cool, you'll get like a cool Malik lame. Monk three or dunk every game, but that's it. Sabonis is lame. I love that too. Let's not, let's not. Keegan Murray's pretty lame too. Okay, maybe they're not as exciting as that. Slow the roll on Malik Monk. He's a bucket. No, that's right. He's but I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying like oh, a cool play. Yeah, yeah, like, cool, okay, like okay, he's okay, good for like okay. a cool dunk yeah, a game. Yeah. But like, I'm not saying that's all he does. But like, in terms of fun, yeah, yeah Fox no, and Monk, fun. Monk are great. But like, Keegan Murray, though, Keegan, Keegan like Murray's Keegan Murray. good. Yeah. But honestly, he's not I mean, that funny. I mean, it's spot up threes. And not to say yeah. anything about his game. I know he's a baller. Sabonis like, is lame. I'm anti Sabonis. I mean, it's spot, it's spot, a, spot this of show threes. Yeah, a little, a little handoff here and there for a dribble pull up from Sabonis. So I feel that. Also, this might be another cold take. I, the Mavs might be my least favorite team in the NBA to watch, and like I, I, cool I appreciate, I appreciate Luke and all that. I just don't like watching. It's hard them. watching teams that literally can't get stops. It's, it's actually fr- Luka, if I was a Mavs fan, dude, I would never watch. I'm game. telling you too, and I'm like one of the biggest Luka supporters there is. He doesn't get enough like flack for like his defense because he has lost in games. He's not guarding yes, sir, uh, but but I, I remember it vividly tuning in. I was watching a game. This is clutch moments versus the Heat. Who who was back down against Bam against a bigger Bam? Luca got the stop in the that post in the clutch. You you saw the energy and the effort from him. When you get that type of energy out of Luca, that makes him a what, complete player. All you need is all you yeah. need is seventy five percent effort. Yeah, it's yeah. getting the competitive. L- listen, I, as a Nick fan and Julius Randle, I, all I ask for is effort. Yeah, so right. I I can appreciate that. Yeah, he stinks. Sorry, he just needs to want it. We'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, you, didn't, you didn't ask for my um, for my teams. Okay, okay. I said sorry, I said, Kenny, I said sorry, Lakers. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I said Lakers and I mean, Kings. I, I could have figured. You know, I said Lakers. I said you Lakers got on me for Kings. saying the Kings. You <laughs> picked the Kings. <laughs> <laughs> no, he got mad at you for wanting the Kings in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't say yeah. From a basketball standpoint, the Kings are fun and they're good. But no, I, I, I was gonna say though, this is an extremely hard question. I couldn't really yeah. like like if I try to think of it from an unbiased standpoint. Like, it's, it's a single-game elimination. Anyone yeah. can win from that point. And the yeah. Lakers and the Warriors have looked really bad this season at points. I think yeah. if you threw these four teams in and, like, they all played each other in seven-game series, I think maybe all of them could, like, any of those teams could win any of those yeah, teams. Any like, of those teams yeah, any of those teams. They're all very close. I agree. And, I mean, obviously the, the star power helps, but I don't know. Moving on, the future's bright. We've seen a lot of young guys step up this year. I'm going to give you a couple players to compare, and you're going to give me the one that you would rather start the franchise with. Starting off... Jaime Jaquez Jr. or Brandon Miller? Who wants to go first? We'll go to choose. Yeah, I'll kick it off. I mean, Jaquez is one of my favorite players in the league. I loved him at UCLA. But okay. I can't really justify him over Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller stepped in to Charlotte and is the number one scoring option right away. Like, that's, yep. that's impressive. By default of injury, and but you're not wrong. There's, yeah, you're right. But there's concerns with him. I mean, he doesn't like going to the hole, but the outside efficiency, I mean, he's like, I think he shoots 39% from three now, 50% from the field. Yeah, no, he's bucket. Like, Miller is th- the potential there. It's, it's Paul George. That's what it was coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, like, he's, yeah. he's a special talent. Akez is great. I do think he'll be a starter in the league for a long time, but I got to be most. I, th- I think it matters where you are. You know, because if yeah. you're in Charlotte. Yeah, it does. If you're in Charlotte, mm-hmm. you're not going to start behind me because you're, you're not getting any free agents. If I'm yeah. Miami, I'd keep Akez rather than bring Miller in, Exactly. Honestly. That's what I'm saying. So it matters where you are. The thing is, too, I, I, I'm taking Brandon Miller just because of the potential. Mm-hmm. I mean, I literally said coming out of the draft, UCLA, I mean, Jaime was ready to play. He came in, and the yeah. fact he went so Smooth. late, I thought a couple teams could have used him earlier than that. But Brandon Miller has the star potential, like you said. His favorite player, or he thinks the best player ever is Paul George, right? Did you say that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He said that, which, but which, he was buying in. Yeah, basketball players, <laughs> they look at it from like a, oh, who do I want to be? Or who yeah, do I right. want to replicate? So I didn't give him too much hate on that, but I was like, whoa, <laughs> Paul George's best player ever. I don't know. You want to start your franchise with a guy who says Paul George is the greatest player of all time? <laughs> Paul George isn't even a top Listen. 75 player of all time. I mean, not even 250. Okay, I can name top 50 players. You're better, better, players. better than PG 13%. Oh, my gosh. Look, Hawkins <laughs> brings it all to the table. Brandon Miller, I don't know what he brings on the defensive end. I know he's great on the offensive end, and he's athletic. Okay, who cares? But Hawkins can get, he can score from all three levels. I know both of them can score all three levels, yeah. but Hawkins got the post-up game. 
He it, got a little bit of a nice. retro in it him. It is very nice. You know what I mean? And and this is a, this is a small a small ball five man. Yeah. How it doesn't get more versatile than that? It doesn't, but you got to yeah. you got to think about what Brandon Miller could. I'll be. go Brandon Miller. And it, it's yeah. tough to rely on stuff like that, but. Yeah. I think I know. Maybe so I'll just sit here and he, dream. He, he could be a star. I know, I know. But I'm so, I'm so I like insisting dealing in absolutes. Rather, but I, know, I know what type of role I have with Jaime Hawkins. Okay, right. but yeah. here's the question. Yeah. You're, 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 you're an expansion answer. team. You're the first overall pick, and you have two guys on your board, Jaime Hawkins and Brandon Miller. You're taking Jaime Hawkins. Jaime Hawkins. Jaime Hawkins. Really? Yep. Well, the 24-year-old, who's, he's efficient, you. averaging 12 a game, getting pretty much the same minutes as Brandon Miller, who's three years younger, and who's averaging four more points. Yeah, but he has Jimmy Butler on his team. He exactly. Has Bam out of bottom. Exactly. I'm that, that helps the argument, though. That helps. Role, role players. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Role players are more important to championship teams than the star players are. It's true. We've seen a lot of yeah, stars it's go. True, without, but you're yeah. still like he's your I don't star agree player. With that. <laughs> You're starting with Tommy. I guess he'll be your star about player. It, if, if the expansion team you're talking about is Seattle, okay, we got KD coming. <laughs> we got a couple of people coming already. Paulo probably, sadly to say, if Seattle ever gets a franchise, I will. I will cry because he is going straight to Seattle. Yeah, he loves Seattle. So. To add to your point, though, about Brandon Miller, if you're telling me that he's all, he can already do from the outside and all he needs to learn is just start going and attacking yeah, the rim, he needs to get better that's at attacking the best case scenario like the for easiest part of playing offense. Exactly. Especially I do, with I do a 7'4 exactly. wingspan or whatever the hell he's got on him. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, him and Jabari Smith were like the two guys in the past 10 years who are like can't miss prospects. Who knows how it's going to turn out, but... We we'll call Jabari and obviously, Smith. Obviously, like Zion miss. and them, but like, what? no, I was on that way. Jabari Smith is I wanted a Jabari miss. Smith Jr. over Paula. I thought for sure, dude, in college. I have to tell you. I have to tell you. Jabari, Jabari, Jabari Smith, Smith over Paula. Paula. I remember that. How do we want no, Jabari no. Smith over Paula? No, 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 Look no. Not no, 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 KD now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm saying beforehand. True. Beforehand. Well, Next two points. Before, before we like get into this, could we say who we want first instead of explaining? All yeah. right. I like it. All right. Sangoon or Mobley? Oh, you don't want to start though. No, you brought up the idea. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. You know I'm taking Sangoon. Okay. Mm. I'm taking Mobley. Mm, Sangoon. Sangoon team. Okay. Yep. Sangoon, yep. Who you got? That's 100%. This is one where like when you first look at it, people are probably like, oh, Mobley, no problem. Mm. Sangoon's? He's... He's kind of like, like, I would probably go Sangoon. They, like, he's like, no, and I see all of the hype with Mobley, too. Believe yeah. me, I'm huge on Mobley. He worked with Benyana in the post the other day. Did you see <laughs> yeah, that? No, he did, yep. Wait, I, wait, Mobley or Sangoon? Sangoon. Oh, Sangoon had 45 and 16 yeah, on his head. Yeah, he's nasty. Come on. I think Sangoon is a better player right now. I think yeah. if, you ha- if you have him as your best player, which, I mean, he is the Rockets' best player, I would say. Yeah, I would say, too. I, I think your team would be better than if Mobley is your best player. Yeah. But I think most teams, Evan Mobley... Gets into and fills a better role than Simon mm. fills. That's a very fair point. No, that's that's, a that's very how I feel. Point. And I've also been a Mobley guy since he was coming out. I think the potential is sky high, but he just doesn't get better on offense, it appears, yeah. which sucks. Yep. But I was about to say, I, I wish he would just get better on offense. Yeah. That's yeah. my only gripe with him, you know. Everything else, the defense, obviously. He's soft, too. He's soft. He's a little soft. Mitchell, Mitchell oh, Robinson yeah. said oh, best last year in the playoffs. He's soft. No, but yeah, no, I was thinking of that because I did watch Dean Wade outplay Mobley. Mobley was sitting on the bench <laughs> yeah, in the yep, fourth quarter yep. in crunch time. He disappears yep. a lot. Yeah, so I got to say, Shangoon, I know that Mobley is, a, is an extremely elite defender. He's one of the yeah. few guys in the league that can legitimately guard one to five. Mm. But Shangoon, the offensive threat that he is because of the vision that he brings to the game oh, yeah. and the post up movement. That's the best part. And then, I'm not saying he's an elite shooter, but he can stretch the floor yeah. if you need mm-hmm. him to. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what you said. You said he dropped 45 and 16, yeah, right? Yeah, right on well, the, the, the very next night, he dropped a, a, a near 2020 yeah. triple double. Yep. Yeah, come on. Yeah, Sangoon's yeah. nice. He could play, yeah. man. I, I don't think he could go wrong here, though. Me neither. I don't. I, like, I thought yeah, the first one was a, little, was a little bit more clear cut for me, at least. Me too. Even yeah, though these answers too. are, I don't know. Moving on. Next two players are going a little guard. Garland or LaMelo Ball? This is a good one because this is like you have to take into account injuries. So. Yeah, I mean, they both had some injuries, too, you know? They yeah. both yeah, had... Yeah, LaMelo more LaMelo so. definitely I think LaMelo's more, are more serious, though. Yeah. They oh, are. They are they more are. serious, too. And the way he plays, too, it's like street ball. Like, he's always... Mm, you, yeah. you never know what's going to happen to his ankles. You see his brother now. His brother's back, by the way. Yeah, not Lonzo. Ba- he's doing, yeah, like... Lonzo. Full, that's so he's doing exciting. Full that's full not back. He's sprinting. Dude, that's he's sprinting. Not back. He's sprinting. Yeah, 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 yeah. you think that I missed something? He's not back. Dude, think about it. A year ago, a year ago, Stephen A. Smith reported he couldn't sit down right. And now oh, what's the okay, so Stephen A. Smith so right. I know, I know what he's saying, though. He, I, watched he's, Stephen A. Finally I watched Stephen A. I watched Stephen A. Stephen A. I watched Stephen A. say where he would drop in Fortnite the other day. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. He talks
that the Magic were like low key pursuing Garland, and I was in my apartment with Chooch, and oh my god, I was so excited because I was like, Garland's the guy happen. he passed for. Got, it didn't happen. Bro got excited off a of rumor. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say something. I don't know if that's broken for sure. Oh, I, <laughs> I have to get excited because it's Orlando, dude. Like we don't get anybody, so I'm, I'm gonna go Garland. I think he has the better. Uh, Playmaking ability, and I think Lamelo's going to be a better scorer like throughout the rest of their career. But I'm going to take Garland. I'm going to concede DG. I, I, I definitely Ooh. think Garland is better. Um, oh, now <laughs> that's the thing. He's better now. And Lamelo's potential is crazy. I don't like everything that I've seen from Lamelo so far. Honestly, I thought he was going to come out of the gates way harder than they did in the league. Yeah. But yep. he he is Second getting better. He has gotten a lot better. Right. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But he, like, he still like can't yeah. finish yeah. around the rim. Like I don't know. There's a lot of concerns with Lamelo. Garland has contributed to winning already, so yeah. I would just yeah. contributed I would to take winning. the same option. I mean, he was, a, first round he was a brick last okay. year. I think he was, dude, game Lamelo two, he was good. Sniffed the rest of the playoffs. Was <laughs> and he's in shock, but, but I, I don't know about what y'all talking about with DG. LaMelo is way better than Darius yeah. Garland, in my opinion. I think LaMelo is the better playmaker. He has better vision. He He's obviously going to – I think he has the assist numbers. I think he hasn't beaten the assist numbers as well. Yeah. Um, DG's just a dribbler. He's just a dribbler, man. That's all. That's all I see him. Well, he's a bucket getter. Yeah, he's a dude. bucket he's getter, a but general. But Lamelo, when Lamelo, he give you a triple double. He can. I don't what care. Do you, mean? you don't care about a triple double. You don't care about a twenty point loss. He had three triple doubles in a row back when he was in the Pelicans. Yeah, triple double. Hey, 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 if, if you switch Lamelo and Darius Garland right now, the Cavs would be in a better position. Uh, how, no, they can't no, be no, be I disagree. That's true. But if you take injuries out, that yes, you take injuries. I disagree. If you take injuries out. You, I, I you think that you don't with, take injuries out. You think that with Lamelo, the Cavs are worse. I don't know yes. if they're worse. I don't know if they're worse. I think Garland is better. Lamelo's a, right a bigger now. Bigger body too, as well. Yeah. We have to take into account. Yeah. D- DG is a liability, complete no, liability. Right. He is, he, he, neither of them play defense, though, for the record. But Garland is worse. But, and but, you but can, but and you can get defense out of Lamelo if you coach him the right way. So, but no, I gotta go Garland. I got And how much better do you think the Cavs could realistically do? Are you saying they get Lamelo? I mean, they're already what? What are they like? 43 wins? Like 42 yeah. wins? How much better do they that, really get? 50 win right now. Uh, 50 win. I mean, right touching, they're touching Boston territory. That's, yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, that's... No. A, 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 I think that's horrendous. Derek Rose oh, is great, that. but he's not, like, this special, special player I think yeah, we make. I, I agree. I agree. I don't I think, think he's special. He's special. He's special. He's special. I don't All think right, he's special We got to move on a little bit. Two is better than one. We're doing the board, guys. I love the board. I love the board. There's been tons of great duos over the course of NBA history. You guys are going to give me your three favorite. Not the best, not the greatest. Your three favorite. Kenny, start us off. Oh, got to get the strut. Yeah, uh, you got to get, get the strut. This is a duo. This is a duo. got to get the strut. You're not doing solo. Four duos. Make duos. All right. Pretty, I'm pretty good. Yeah. You up there? Okay. No. My first duo, we have. Yeah. Boogie great pick. and great AD. Pick. It's a great pick. So this is this is a little bit of a rare one. I know some of y'all might have even forgot that these two were Pelicans. But this team was so deep that they actually could have won the NBA championship. That's what AD was saying. But this was the time where Anthony Davis was dropping consist uh, not consistently, but 40 and 20, like really yeah. he did that a lot. It wasn't abnormal. It wasn't it abnormal, was, literally. Yeah, and Boogie abnormal. was going for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This this was this was prime Boogie. This, um, then he got hurt. And then it went downhill from there. But this is the boogie where it's like, okay, he's an all-star. He's a dominant force in the league. So this two, the big men. Oh, my God. I love big men. Continue. (laughs) And then now we have Nash and Stoudemire. I believe that this is the best. I I think this is going to be the best (laughs) pull of the show. This is going to be the best duo that you're going to see. Because Nash and Stoudemire was like a mini Shaq and Kobe. I think this is actually the greatest pick-and-roll duo of all time, if you ask me. You have Steve Nash. Excellent passer. You have Amari Stoudemire, mid-range machine. And he was also a great lob threat. So, um, seven seconds or less, Mike Dan and Tony, he invented this yep. offense, and it flourished because of them two. Yep. Next duo, we had none other than really no. LeBron and Kyrie. You know I had to awesome, include LeBron. Yep. This is a hard choice. I wanted to go Dean, uh, Dwayne Wade, not Dean yeah. Wade, <laughs> Dean Wade. But, um, you know, with, with Kyrie, I just love Kyrie more than I love Dwayne Wade. And LeBron, obviously, I know how much I love him. He's near and dear to my heart. But these two brought the greatest championship of all time, 2016. It doesn't, there is not a better championship ring than that one. So that's why this duo is at the top of my list. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a great, great picks. I, I, love, I love number three. That was a great one. Yeah, that was a special time. Was very good. Also, I, just, I whispered it to them. But I don't think people really, obviously, like maybe we do and older, People don't realize how good Stat was. Like, he was mm, mid-range no. jumper automatic. No, yeah, automatic. no, not at all. And to, to, like, I don't know. 
He, he was fantastic. Before his time, too. A little bit. Yeah, now a little time. bit. I yeah, came out. Yeah, like a little okay. bit. Not like it was around that area. But if he was like now, oh my God. Why do you say, why you say a little before his time? I don't think so. I just like think with the KGs and the Tim Duncans. Okay, good point. I, I mean, yeah, true, but I just think like now it's like he would have. Did he have a three ball? No, like, no, no. But the no. thing is now, but I the think mid-range, now he when he first went automated. to the Knicks, he had like a stretch where he was dry. He like had like third, yeah. like five straight thirty-point games. Something it was insane. It yeah, was tough. and that wasn't bit, even not, not too far. Yeah, he was tough. Chooch, let's hear yours. Speaking of another big man that loved the mid-range, my third duo, we got yeah. Dame and yeah. Marcus yeah. Aldridge. And if you know anything about me, Dame is my favorite player of all time. I remember uh, vividly one night when I was at my friend's basement, I believe I was in like third grade, uh, Dame came off the screen in the playoffs against the Rockets, Houston, yeah. took it off from like 30 feet, chucked it up. That's when I fell in love with Dame. And that's when I fell in love with this team that they had built, Wesley Matthews, Nick Batum. I just loved everything about this team. And another Easy. contributing factor to this, if you ever played with LaMarcus Aldridge in 2K, Oh, dude, dude I just oh, said 2K. Oh, yeah. my God. I just said that was, was my favorite monster. team to play with in 2K. <laughs> monster, yeah. pink diamond. Uh, and Dame, obviously, 2K is glitchy, pulling from anywhere. Yeah. But I went into uh, a quadruple overtime game with the Blazers against my friend one time. It was the most fun I've ever dude, had. Dude, Blazers were nice. The most fun I've ever uh, had. Moving on <laughs> to a more obvious one, I would say, definitely. But uh, KD so and Russ, there's, there's never been a more story duo in my opinion just like the history looking back at it now and i'm not talking about accolades it's just like where they were yeah. and then they hated each other for a couple of years it was all just so entertaining but my favorite part of it was when they were together in okc and it was just so fun i wanted every single pair of kd shoes man mm, yeah, me and my agree. boys walking in oh. sixth grade off the bus talking about russ's numbers from the night before like this was a special duo they really had every child nba fan like Everyone loved this team. Yeah. Yeah. And they had something about them. They were just so fun. And then moving on to number one, most personal one for me is, uh, you know, it never worked. Yucky. It never worked. I know. I know. But... Man, this is the, this is the duo that brought my favorite team back, man. This is, like, no, this is They got us back to the that, that, that is it's it's sentimental. It's, it's, it's sentimental. People it's laugh at it, all look at it, and all cry about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because these guys, <laughs> we'll they took a 10-win team back to the playoffs. Simmons, obviously it didn't work out. Very, very different stances for Philly fans on these two right yeah. now. I'll always have a love for Ben. The Prince, you know, back when he was the Prince. The next LeBron, dude, you didn't like him? Hey, uh, the shot wasn't there. The shot was <laughs> never, never there. It was never there. It was never there. And now we see Embiid being an MVP. Unfortunately, it never worked out, but, you know, got to show some respect for what they did for my guys. But yeah. I mean, it's, it's personal fate. I mean, I think that's, that, that was fine. The rest right. of them were, were pretty good. I, I really like that Blazers one. No, yeah, the Blazers right. one's one very unorthodox, and I liked it. I just want right. to talk about Paolo Bancaro, actually. Yeah. I, do I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll talk about it. Yeah, I think we're going to bring it up. I'm not 100% sure. So my number three, you talked about it, D-Wade Boo. LeBron. Lob after lob, one of the most iconic passes ever when D-Wade passed it to him, and then he did like this. I can't do it like him, but still. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, these, do that again? Yeah, do it. <laughs> I was right there doing the dunk, but still. These guys were so tough together, and I honestly think they were more talked about than KD and Russell Westbrook. Oh. Not yeah. to knock oh, yeah. on you. Definitely no, they were. not to knock. They were. I'm just saying that these guys were like the duo of my childhood, and it was just so sick to see LeBron come into his own, and then D Wade already had a championship. They worked so well together, PB and J. Let's go to number two. <laughs> <laughs> they felt like villains. Russ and Katie felt like yeah. as a All right, look, right. Right. Yeah, All right, look we got Paulo and Franz, and I know this is so early, and as I'm not saying anything wild. <laughs> I'm just going to think, I think that they have three championships in them within the next six years. That's insane. I don't <laughs> think that's crazy, because if you, I mean, you just watch these two play. You but don't these think are, it's crazy? What? No, I'm nothing. fully immersed into my NBA fandom right now. That's all I watch, all I do, all I study. So these two, I'm growing up with them, and they're going to get some buckets, man. And then we got number one right now in a minute. <laughs> right here, Jermaine Austin, Dwight yeah, Howard. In. This is what I'm I grew in. up on, okay? I'm, I'm not in. saying they're the best, but you got mini Jameer Nelson, all star, my guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Jameer, or not, not, then you have Dwight Howard, right? Three straight defensive player of the years, not top 75, probably the biggest miss, I think, in NBA history, in my opinion. We could take a couple that of those guys out. That was criminal. That was criminal. That was Three criminal. straight defensive player of the years, nobody talks about it. So, yeah, those were my duos. You can't. See Ben Simmons and say that's gross, then throw Jameer Nelson on the screen. Yeah, that's, 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 that's wrong with Jameer Nelson. Jameer Nelson. Nelson. Oh, Jameer Nelson's an all-star. We got a sweet. Jameer Nelson. Why is he so Ben Simmons is an all-star, my man. Jameer, multiple times. Jameer Nelson didn't have an ego. He went out there, he balled, and he was an all-star. He should have had an ego. He was in the league for about ten years. And Jameer Nelson's son is 
Actually, so Benson might not last in for 10 years. No, you can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. It's probably going to be trash. Okay. Hey. Sorry, sorry. Go, go, go. All right, so I'm... Don't... <laughs> even do that. I'm continuing. You just had Jameer Nelson up on Thank the screen. Thank you, David Lee. I'm and taking Jameer oh, Nelson yeah. over <laughs> Nate <laughs> Robinson. Yeah. I'm never... taking Jameer Nelson over Nate Robinson. Uh, how many dunk? How many dunk contest championships does Jameer Nelson have? Oh how many all? God. How many All Stars does Nate Robinson have? I don't know, but David Lee has won. How many meaningful minutes <laughs> David does Lee Nate Robinson have? Have you ever this seen David Lee? This is going to follow <laughs> yeah. how I grew up on basketball. Both these guys drafted in 2005. I didn't watch them in 2005, but I watched them a couple years later. David Lee. You want to talk about overrated? He only shot under 50% from the field once in, once in his entire career, and it wasn't even for a season. It was during a stint during the 2015-16 season with the Celtics, I think. He was, I mean, he was averaging 20 a game, shooting 55% from the field. He was a bucket getter. Nate Robinson, three-time NBA dunk contest champion, blocked Yao Ming before. And LeBron. And uh, this and is, LeBron. this is, block LeBron. LeBron was cool. Block LeBron. Just wait, wait, but just because you found a picture of them doesn't mean they were even a duo. Though. Oh yeah, they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, they were drafted. They were a duo. They were drafted in 2005 together and both left in 2010. Or they just played together. They were two. They were two. Number go. two. <laughs> this is following. This is following along my NBA, like my basketball journey. Great. These thanks. two guys. So I watched. I watched David Lee. I watched Nate Robinson when I was younger. I was low-key a bandwagon fan for Kentucky back in the day, so John Wall, that's when I really started watching college basketball. A couple years later, Bradley Beal at Florida, watched Kentucky and Florida battle out, and then the NBA. I mean, this was fun. I mean, remember when John Wall hit, was it John Wall who hit the buzzer beater and then stood up on the table and Bradley yes, Beal were like, was. bromance, all that. Fantastic duo. Under it, and I look at these uniforms, these are awesome uniforms, random. They were, they random. crispy. Number one, I'm keeping it with the Knicks. Oh my are you, God! Oh, what, are you not going to call this a duo? Well? No, Just this one. You know, this uh, one's kind of don't, disgusting. Don't, don't even discuss it. Uh, Number one, I mean, yourself. I literally had a pit in my stomach when R.J. Barrett and Emmanuel quickly got traded. These guys bought the mix back to a certain extent with Julius Randle. Nothing else. This isn't even a duo. Yes, it I don't have anything else to say. You could have put Randall and Brunson, if anything. How? How are they a duo <laughs> any more than they were? How are they not a duo? What are you talking they about? They both play on the Knicks. Listen, one started, know. one was off the Did bench. Did you have any problem with that? Yeah. A lot of, I had a lot of problems. Guys, this is sentimental value. This, this is emotion. I know. No, don't this get me wrong, emotion. dude. I threw Ben Simmons up there, but... Dude, we're moving on. Playoff RJ predictor. Barry's I don't want to talk about... I don't want to talk about duos anymore. <laughs> moving on. Playoff predictor. I mean, as it stands, this would be the matchup. T-Wolves, Suns. Who you guys got? Oh, I, I mean, I don't know. It's easy to say the Suns, right? Mm. You look at Devin Booker, it's really easy Cats to say out. the Suns. Cat is out. Was he out for the playoffs? Uh, first round? He's going to make. He's going to be. He's going to be back. Yeah, but still, available, available is not fully healthy. Either right. way, though, it's like I'm going to take the T Wolves. I said it like the beginning of the year. I said I think they can win a playoff series because Ant is going to step up, right? And then the Suns. I'm just. I'm not that big of a believer. You see the names, and obviously they, they can do something. Don't get me wrong. They can make a deep run, but I, I'm going T Wolves. Yeah, I'm going to go Timberwolves as well. This is one I had to think about this one, in my opinion, but. I think the Timberwolves have the edge because of that paint presence that they're going to have. Yep, yep. When, and then it's going to be difficult. I was thinking, okay, so maybe the Wolves won't be able to have that lineup in, say the Suns want to go small. But if the Suns go small, they're going to get physically overpowered. Yep. So they're going to yeah, have to 100%. have Nurkic in the game. And either if they, even if they have Nurkic in the game, Gobert and Cat are going to dog them. And as long as Anthony Edwards makes tough shots, then it's going to be a yeah. good series. I question Edwards and Towns' decision-making a lot towards the end of games, yeah. like the primetime games especially. Mm -hmm. But hot take, at the end of the day, I think Anthony Edwards right now is the best player in the series. So I'm taking some rules. Katie just take. dropped 45 on one of the best defenses in the league, but Dude, that's fair. Edwards just had 40 and had the craziest yeah, block I've ever like seen. 30, on like 30 shots. He didn't miss in the fourth quarter. I, I'm, I, I'm a huge Andy Edwards fan, but if you are putting up 30 shots I, in the game, I think he's ready. I think he's, I think he's ready to listen. take that right. next step, and I think a the take series would be take. taking that next a step. Take a take. Moving on. There's going to be some ridiculous takes by Wells right here. What? Next, this is, uh, you know what I'm talking about. The next one, Knicks versus Magic. Oh, I, yeah. No, sorry, start with it. What are you going to say? Oh, 3-1 no, in the regular season. What are you going to say? 3-1 in the regular season. That was exactly what I was going to And how many, like, they've been, were the Knicks even healthy Look, for any of those games? Three. He's, he's clowning did, you right did, now. Did, <laughs> he's did clowning you right now. literally just blow out the Magic yeah, we did. just now? And we were shorthanded. Oh, come on. We held you to 74 points, but and that was the lowest total this season before I think Until, a team only scored 73. That I don't yeah, know no, and it was karma. But, yeah, I got to go with the Magic. I'm going to say the Magic in 6-7 here. And it's a little bit biased. Of course it's biased. It's my favorite team. But at the end yeah. of the day, you have Jalen Suggs, who can not stop Jalen Brunson, but guess what? He's going to give him some trouble, right? And then you have Franz to guard. How? What do you mean how? He's one of the best guard defenders in the league. 
Jalen Suggs is going to give him trouble more so than a lot of other guards in the league are going to do. And that's going to be the only way to neutralize Jalen Brunson. And then you've got Franz Wagner, Paulo Bancaro, both 6'10". I don't care who you're throwing at them. OG, you're throwing Randall. Those two can defend, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, they can defend. I'll have, I'll, yeah, exactly. I'll have you two guys just, I mean, not, I, there's, I, I don't have anything to say that you're not going to say. I mean, Nixon, this is probably like five games. Five games? <laughs> yeah. Five games. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I did, yeah, I did go six. with the Knicks, but let's oh. not sleep. In all honesty, I'm not let's sleeping, not sleep on the Magic. I'm, I'm not sleeping. Not. But fully like, the healthy. Knicks, you have better well, 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 well. You Fully healthy. Fully healthy. If the if Knicks are fully healthy, you're you're out here saying Jalen Suggs to me. How many games? Jalen Suggs, Suggs, Suggs is the best guard defender in the league, though. Well, he's top five. Since the Knicks oh, made that trade, Deuce McBride is better. <laughs> Deuce since, McBride is better okay, than Jalen Suggs. Okay, I'm not saying that. Since the Knicks well, got OG, but he's good. Deuce, Deuce he's McBride. Good. They've been fully he's healthy. Solid. I think they've lost like four games. Exactly. But now, but now, well, you're, well, but now we're actually well throwing machine. Deuce McBride they're not, they're into the fire. We're actually yeah, doing but that. Is, Do you trust is, Deuce McBride? I don't even think he's going to have to be a, he's not, even gonna he be a rotation. He's going to be in a rotation by that time. Okay, so, like, what? Uh, you, he's not in, like, the seventh or eighth. I think, he, he, I think he probably, if, he, if I'm, I'm Coach sure. Thibodeau, I'm playing him over Burks and Milton. I think Milton, McBride's but, pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. 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 I agree. Shake? Yeah. Oh, they he, got sniper shakes. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no, but exactly. We got shake, shake, swap, and No, that moves the needle for me. All right, I'm going next. They have Magic have Joe Ingles. Okay, good point. Good point. And the Minister of Defense. Nixon four now. And the Minister of Defense. Judah's going to lock up anyone. I'm sorry. Right, this, I'm this debate, top well, five defender in the league. If this is actually a series, we have plenty of time to talk about it. But we, we got to move on. 360 Sports Moments of the Day. A little bit of UFC talk. I hope you guys watched, watched that on Saturday. Sean O'Malley. I mean, it wasn't close against Cheeto Vera. Mm. Uh, to win UFC 299. People are calling him the most entertaining, most superstardom, bantamweight fighter ever. I'm not going to say this or that, but Justin Poirier is my favorite fighter. He had a knockout, too. What did you guys think of the card in general? And you guys. That's awesome you. card. This fight specifically was awesome. It was one of the single best performances I've seen from a striker. I think Sean is well on pace to be possibly the best bandwidth of all time. And all that talk about how he needs to fight uh, Marab next instead of fighting Elia. Elia's not going to take that fight, He though. stops Marab in under three. Marab doesn't finish anybody. Give us the Ilya and Sean fight. It's entertaining. They're both killers. It'll be way more fun. Whatever he just said. I agree. <laughs> What's your Conor name? McGregor. Does he still fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought you were laughing because you had to take it <laughs> yeah, back. Yeah, I, I thought he was laughing. I thought he was clowning. I'm, I'm not a huge uh, UFC. Well, guy. UFC talk, I disagree with that. Taporia's fighting Volkanovski again. Uh, moving I'm on. For it. Legal tampering period. I mean, free agency is basically. Like, no, legal tampering, no, it's free no. agency. Giants lost Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. Steelers got Russell Wilson. Who do you root for the Vikings? Vikings lose Kirk Cousins. They lost. Was that they the only one? They lose Jettis now, too, probably. Yeah, yeah Jettis is going to be a Jettis. Saquon, keep we're hollering. on Penn State's campus right now, so this is your domain, okay? I've been here three the years. The Giants didn't, didn't You've help You've already them. been here. Hey, no, no, no. We ruined, his, we, we ruined his career for the time, that, time being that he was there. Definitely revive it. It was all our also, fault. Also, Saquon wasn't the pick at two if we're going way back. Saquon is still, to this day, not the pick at two there with that quarterback class. Oh, no, class. but he was. Even, no, even <laughs> knowing Josh Allen was there. I don't care, dude. Saquon was a special yeah. talent. <laughs> you don't take a running back, too. I'm on his domain, but guess what? You're a traitor, buddy. Whoa. Thank you. Whoa. I, I, well, yeah. Thank you. I gotta say, you I don't mean, do that. A Vikings fan, but someone that lives around a lot of Eagles fans, that this genuinely makes me sick. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I don't know why. Uh, yeah, but it's like Division the needle rivals, has not you don't moved. Do that. No, this I, is not what the Eagles I watched, needed. I watched Danny Woodhead go from the Jets to the Patriots. <laughs> he's playing the ball too. off about six times a game. Wait, so. what are we talking about? We're talking about Saquon. Yeah, he's a Danny, Danny Woodhead was also a traitor. He went from the Jets to the Patriots. I'm I know saying. that's, that's Danny like a, that's like a yeah. Whoa, Danny, Danny Woodhead. Woodhead isn't a Saquon. That's like a name I pull out in 20 years, and I'm like, oh, remember him? Saquon's gonna be one of the best running back. That's what it is. No, Saquon, that's Val. I I would be sick to my stomach if I was as a Giants fan. If he was a Jet. He's, he's, he's so good. And I, I, yeah. I honestly, I hope he succeeds, but the Eagles don't, if that makes sense. Yeah, I it hope does. He has a great it does. Year. That's how and I, I feel about Eagle, it. Yeah, what were Eagle. some other moves, Aaron? What were some other? I mean, Kirk to the Falcons. Yeah, that's Kirk, cool. I just want to point to the camera real quick. Kirk, I will miss you so much. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Kirk, I'm going to miss you so much. If it's not us, please go win one. You are the best quarterback that I ever got to watch play for the Vikings, and I love you. The Raiders got um, Christian Wilkins, I know. Did they? Yeah. And Josh Jacobs yeah, was the back one. Yeah. Pack, you Wilkins want to talk about nice. not moving the needle? The Packers Dude, signed Josh Jacobs that? and cut Aaron Jones. What was yeah. that? I don't Didn't Aaron it. Jones want out, though? Or am I making it? No, I like, I like no, Aaron Jones no. more I, mean, I, I like Jacobs. They I, mean, I like a restructure, both, but, but... I feel like, I don't know, not moving the needle. I do agree, with though. They, they didn't need a running back, but they did have Bryce Huff, the Eagles, and Bryce Huff as a Jet. Absolute tank. That's going to be it for us. Tomorrow, you got to tune in. What, it's Frenzy? I
550 tomorrow if you're not there i mean what are you even doing what are you doing what yeah, are you doing? Not, the right not the right thing not the right thing unless clearly. unless you're in class or at work you should be watching yeah i mean even if you are in class or at work no, no, no. Okay, okay. Headphones on. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> ah, sorry. Class, yeah, I'm a studious guy. Anyway, let, let's wrap it up. I love talking basketball, especially with you guys. Chooch, Kenny, Wells, Cade, 360 Sports. We'll see you tomorrow.